Hello and welcome to Veterinary Instrumentation's latest episode of Under the Skin, a videography and animation series introducing key devices and techniques used during orthopaedic surgery. So, let's go under the skin. In this episode, we are looking at how a dynamic locking plate, or DLP, is used in fracture fixation. A DLP, with its distinctive figure of eight shaped holes, can be used in numerous different ways, depending on the type of fracture being treated and the desired surgical result. A DLP allows a surgeon to combine locking technology and axial compression where clinically appropriate. One end of the plate hole is threaded to accept locking screws. The other end is an oval slanted hole of the same design as a DCP plate hole. Locking technology offers a very secure plating construct. The threaded screw heads lock into place in the threaded plate holes, creating a rigid, angle-stable construct. Where axial compression is not appropriate or achievable, the DLP can be used in purely locking mode as a neutralization or bridging plate. For a transverse fracture, axial compression is appropriate and desirable. The DLP can be used in non-locking mode to achieve this, with the benefit of the stability and strength of the locking mechanism for the non-compression screws. Specific equipment is required for using a DLP in this way, and all equipment must be appropriate for the size of implants being used. A pilot drill, a universal drill guide, a locking screw drill guide, a depth gauge, bending levers, a screwdriver. Other videos in this series have described the use of the universal drill guide, the depth gauge and the bending levers. The same principles apply to using a DLP in compression mode as to using a DCP, namely that the plate must be perfectly contoured to the bone and the plate must be pre-stressed. These principles are discussed in the DCP plating video. The first screw placed when using a DLP in compression mode is a non-locking cortical screw in the neutral position. This is placed in the oval end of the plate hole nearest the fracture on one side. Neutral pilot hole placement is achieved by pressing down on the spring-loaded tip of the universal drill guide. The depth of the hole is measured and the screw inserted in the usual way. This screw secures the plate to the bone. The second non-locking cortical screw is placed in compression mode on the other side of the fracture. The universal drill guide is not pressed down, but is held against the edge of the oval plate hole to achieve loaded pilot hole positioning. As this screw is tightened, the screw head slides down the slope of the oval plate hole, traveling towards the center of the plate. Because the screw thread is engaging the bone as the screw head moves, it causes the bone to move towards the center of the plate and towards the other bone fragment. Assuming the bone fragments were in contact, this creates axial compression across the fracture. A further compression screw may be applied on both sides of the fracture if necessary, but it is very unusual to need more than two compression movements. The first screw should be loosened half a turn as the subsequent compression screw on the same side of the bone is tightened to allow the bone to move. This screw must then be re-tightened once the compression screw is in place. The remainder of the screws are then placed either as non-locking neutrally placed cortical screws using the universal drill guide for neutral pilot hole placement or as locking screws using a locking screw drill guide in the threaded section of the plate holes. Locking screws will be of particular advantage in soft or poor quality bone 
for example, in very young patients with softer bone or in older patients where bone quality may be compromised. A DLP used in locking mode as a neutralization or bridging plate does not need to be contoured as accurately as a plate being used to achieve axial compression. This can save time during surgery as accurate plate contouring can be a time-consuming process. It is also beneficial for fracture healing as soft tissue and periosteum can be left intact beneath the plate and it also allows DLPs to be applied using minimally invasive surgical techniques. For further information on the VI range of instruments and implants for internal fixation, please visit our website or contact our specialist technical support team. Join our online community by following our social media pages, keeping up to date with the latest releases of training and education material, as well as company updates.